That Metal Interview. On this episode of That Metal Interview, we are featuring a duo from the country of Israel uh, by the name of the Dodies. These guys are great. You guys should check them out. They have some badass music. And if you guys didn't hear that last part, I said duo, which means two people. You got Yoni on vocals and guitars, and you have Ran on drums and bass on the keyboard. Yes, you guys heard me. You heard correct. Ran is playing bass on a keyboard with his left hand as he plays the drums with the other hand and both legs, of course. Very, very interesting. And uh, we talk about that on the interview, so you guys should check it out. Uh, you guys can check out their their latest video, Boiling Point, on YouTube and so on and so forth. From their latest album, the newest album, It's One Hell of a Ride. Co-produced by Ron Bumblefoot Thal, of course, of Sons of Apollo X Guns N' Roses. A big shout out to Bumblefoot out there. And the guys from the Dodies, of course. Uh, so... I will stop talking again and I will let you guys check out our interview with the Dodies. Enjoy. First of all, uh, for the people that don't know, you guys are a two-piece band, if I'm correct. You guys do vocals and guitars and Rand does bass and a keyboard on the bass and he plays the drums yep. with one hand and both legs, of course. So uh, how cool is that? I mean, that's very cool. Uh, how? How did this idea start? Well, uh, we used to be a, a three-piece, like a trio. Really? But, uh, yeah, as soon as we found out our bass player could make it to the United States to tour with us, then we had to find someone. So, we used to be a three-piece but our bass player couldn't come with us to the U.S. to tour. And I'd actually seen in Belsheva, our hometown, that used to do something similar. So we actually borrowed their keyboard and we started trying. Nice. And as soon as that worked, yeah, we decided to go with it. I'm a musician myself. I play bass, guitar drums and amongst other instruments i've messed around before with you know playing drums with one hand and both legs and and then picking on the bass with the other hand and stuff like that just playing around messing around at rehearsals or whatever so uh who told you guys hey you know what let's uh let's get a keyboard and uh i'm gonna play with my left hand and I'm going to play the drums with my right hand and two legs. Where, where'd you get that idea from? That's such a cool idea. So so unique. So at first it, it didn't sound that good at all. But we already had the plane tickets and we had to come up with something pretty convenient. Oh, you know, okay. I see, I see what you Logistically uh, convenient. It was just kind of quick. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, we didn't have a person with it. Oh, I see what you mean. It took a few months, but... Yeah. Wow. When I saw those videos or the video of the last one, uh, that's pretty cool. I mean, you're expecting a, a bigger band and it sounds like a big band, but it's just the, you two guys, right? Wow. The last, yeah, thank you. Yes. the last band that I heard of that was like that was White Stripes. You, you guys heard of the White Stripes? That's very nice of you. Yeah, like yeah, well, yeah the, I think they're few bands. I think we've recently seen a, 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 a band that has the same thing going on too. A guy who can drum a playing a keyboard. It's not that common, but it happens, I guess, some some random places on the globe. How is the, the rock scene, uh, the metal scene in Israel? Uh, how does it differ from other countries? How is, what's happening there? Like the rock scene here? Yeah, how is it different from uh, like other countries? It's, it's very, it's small. It's just very, very small. 
it's okay. It's not that bad, but it's, it's just there's not much towards and and uh, and uh, war best to you know after this whole Corona shit dies off, we're trying to tour tour over overseas and maybe Europe, America, you know, do whatever. Awesome. That's very cool. Well, you guys have some good music, good stuff, very good stuff. I heard the your material. I really like it. It's very cool. I know I can tell you guys, you guys are heading to bigger places. I know you guys are touring and you play here and there, and for sure, people are going to catch on and people are catching on for sure. How do you guys arrange a song? Is it lyrics first or music first? M music first, then lyrics. Nice. New album. It's one hell of a ride. Bumblefoot is co-producing, right? Um, how did you hook up yeah. with him? How did you guys hook up with him? Of course, he is a guitar genius. He's a musician of musicians. A big shout out to him. Uh, yes. As soon as we put this podcast out. Uh, how did you hook up with uh, Mr. Ron Bumblefoot? Bumblefoot. Well... Uh, we've got sort of a patron, a woman who believes in our music and pays for all the shit to happen. She, she flew us over to, to Austin to record, and in Austin we recorded in a nice studio with a, a producer who, who had some connections. And, you know, it just rolled, Matt Nevesky's his name, he played with Blue October. And, he, and from, from him, we got to a guy who introduced us to Bumblefoot. And Bumblefoot, I guess, you know, believes in it enough to fly to, uh, to the shithole we live in and record with us. Nice. Just, wow, what an experience. Yeah. How is it working with him? It's great. I mean, he's he's like he's doing a lot for us. I mean, he really he's really sticking his neck out. Um, you know, we were we're doing our best. We just like this minute finished uh, working on on a video. Uh, we've been working on this video for uh, four months. Uh, stop motion animation video. Uh, I drew the the cartoons with my girlfriend. Oh wow! And, and we're at the editor's house right now, and and it's been very intense. I want to cry, and uh, I just we just want to make Bumblefoot proud, man. You know, we want to make Bumblefoot proud. We hope he sees this and it touches him, and and he says, uh, I. I didn't make a mistake, those guys. I think I didn't make a mistake. That's all I wanted. That's all I want him to feel. <laughs> right? Oh, you guys are doing good, and you guys will do great. Watch. Mark my words. <laughs> For those of you listening to this podcast, the Dodies, you can look them up. How can fans find you guys on, on social media, and where can people get your music? Spotify, Bandcamp, Facebook. Yeah, everywhere, pretty much. Yep. Nice. All the platforms. And what's on your online. What's on your you guys wish list or bucket list? What do you guys have in there? What's on your wish list and bucket list? Touring, touring with with the Foo Fighters, touring with with uh, Radiohead, touring with recording in the, in the I don't know who used to do it, but I don't know who some fancy guy making a sound different. I mean, well, Bumblefoot really rocked out on this uh, album we just released, you know. He produced it really, really good. We just, you know, we recorded it in in the room, and you can hear it sounds like a room. Now, a lot of the album, most of the album was recorded in, in, some, in a small studio in southern Israel, and some of it was recorded in Ron's room. Um, and it, we didn't have a lot of days to work on it. It was sort of live, and it sounds good. Still, the next album can sound even better. Even better. Awesome, 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 awesome music. Who are your influences? Who do you guys um, point 
as your musical influences, uh, both of you? Mm, mostly like 90s rock bands, you know, big bands, punk rock bands, you know, Radiohead, Nirvana, Muse, name it. Friends bands, and, you know, a lot of alternative big bands that came out of the 90s uh, influenced us pretty hard. So you say you guys, uh, I heard you guys played uh, a couple of days ago or a uh, week ago. You guys are still gigging right now? Yeah, we're gigging as much as we can before the second wave. Yeah, we're about to, you know, enter the second wave of coronavirus in Israel. So things are shutting down quickly again. Man, that's horrible, huh? Horrible stuff we're going through the whole worldwide, really. Yeah. Everyone's going through some sort of shutdown of their own. You know, it's hard to think that your shutdown is not the worst shutdown everyone has. This is the worst shutdown any individual could have, but it's not. It's not the truth. We're all we're all in the same. We're all in the same. And it's sinking very fast. And I hope I hope to survive the journey. Uh, best gig and your worst gig. So far, wow. Uh, we've had a few good ones, you know. When when the crowd is responsive enough, responsive at all, I mean that's the most fun it can get. Um, like in the U.S., some pretty weird gigs. Yeah, we had a uh, we played a festival in, in Texas called Praying Mantis Festival, and it was, the, the crowd was loving it, you know, they, they were spawning very well to the music, and I guess that, that was a very fun one. I don't know if it was the best, but it was very fun, I, I'm fond of it, and one of the worst gigs was playing in front of, uh, there were mentally disabled, uh, a school of mentally disabled people, we didn't know we were supposed to play there. But when we got, we didn't know what we were headed towards, but, you know, uh, they, they uh, put their hands over their ears and they ran out of the room screaming the moment we started playing. It was very loud and they didn't enjoy it. Really? That was, yeah, that was a horrible show. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That must have been scary for them, huh? It was kind of loud. And yeah, probably. It was loud, you know, it was punk, you know, yeah. it wasn't uh, something they enjoyed. They asked us if we could play Britney Spears afterwards. It was loud music, which they, you know, didn't expect, for sure. Well, what do they expect from rock and roll? Punk rock, huh? <laughs> yeah, punk rock, man. What's next for the Dodies after the pandemic passes and hopefully we all survive? Uh, we become rock stars. There you go. Um, that's it. I mean, that's what, what else you, you want to know. That's it. We've been trying to find, you know, we've been working on on a tour whenever this, you know, whenever the world allows us to do so. So that's our next plan. God knows when. But, yeah. <laughs> Touring. Touring. That's the plan. The second album, third album out. To hear it or after that, we've already got them the songs written. We're just waiting for the right moment to strike. Nice. Well, hopefully, we all survive and get to see all this stuff. Huh? <laughs> Would you guys want to uh, send a message yeah. to your fans, the fan base? Is there anything you guys want to say to your fans out there listening to this podcast? Be patient, stay safe. You know, it's it's gonna be fine. Nice. There you go. Uh, new album. It's one hell of a ride. You guys pick it up. Check it out. The Dodies. And we thank you guys. Thank you for making time. Thank you for uh, making some time for our podcast, That Metal Interview. And we wish you the best and see you on the road, man. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for subscribing to our YouTube channel. Thank you for subscribing and to our website, jrocksmetalzone.com. 
24-7 rock metal. That middle interview podcast, you can catch it for free, download it for free. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, free. On your favorite digital format, Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, TuneIn Radio, and so on and so forth. In any format, you guys, you can find our stuff. And don't forget to support the Dodies. Um, brand new record by the name of It's One Hill of a Ride. It's out there. It's great. And it's badass. These guys are a two-piece band. And they're going to rock the world. And they're going to get to other places. So check it out. Check out their latest video, Boiling Point, on YouTube and so forth and so on. My name is James. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter and all that stuff, Facebook, Instagram, and whatever. Thank you guys for subscribing one more time. And don't forget to keep it metal. That metal interview.